Auto automate automate Ever wonder about what stuff you can automate to make your life easier and more efficient? Well, in this video I give you some techniques, hints and examples for reducing mental or physical load in your life. Like and subscribe Welcome to the Toaster Botnet where I babble about random things until you either get bored or hit the subscribe button. This week's topic, top 10 things to automate in your life. And we're gonna use the term automation very broadly here, but these tips are basically saving you time and energy, which is the point. So don't post a comment on how this is not automation or I will call the internet police on you. Let's get started. I always strive to be efficient. Might it be more efficient to get more stuff done or just to have more free time to slack off? Over the years I've gathered some tricks and tips uh, how to automate or semi-automate some stuff in my life. Um, when you are more efficient you have less stress and as I mentioned have more time to do other things. And it automatically makes you more productive. When you always try to find ways to make life easier, it leads to stress reduction because you are more proactive and because automation is more proactive, you have the feeling that everything is taken care of. But I don't want to keep you in suspense. We are not in a Hitchcock movie here. So let's get straight to my top 10 list. But don't run away too soon. I'm gonna drop some more wisdom after this. So stay around. Here we go. Number 10. The obvious one, but nevertheless important. Automate your backups. Yes, this is low hanging fruit for a um, what to automate video, but we are just at number 10 counting down. So bear with me here. Um, anyways, automate your backups. Might it be cloud, local, smartphone or workstation. Always have your most important stuff backed up with a nightly task or something, make sure you have a recovery plan when shit hits the fan. You will sleep better at night. So without wasting time, let's go straight to number nine, home automation. Home automation is an area um, where I personally have much room to improve. The most basic and important one here is probably having a good or at least decent vacuum robot which can be triggered remotely and by a scheduled time. It was one of the best investments I made in the last decade or so. No more need to vacuum. Seriously, it saves so much time and work. 10 out of 10 would buy again. Another thing is automatic and time-based heating controls. Saves you heating costs and automatically dials it down at night or when you are out and about. Automatic shutters are probably awesome. Wouldn't know, haven't installed any yet but it's still in the back of my mind. It doesn't have to be all smart home and tweeting to Elon from your smart fridge, but a few things are actually pretty useful and save you a ton of time and energy when you think about it. So put home automation on number nine. Moving on, coming in at number eight, your email inbox and email in general. Seriously, if you have too much emails, use automatic filters to detect spam and ads. Also use filters for sorting stuff to keep your inbox clean. There's the approach of inbox zero, which basically says to keep your inbox always at zero. I don't follow it exactly, but most of the time. I don't have more than one or two messages in there at all times. But having a clean inbox is really good for your productivity, sanity and organization. If it's an event, put it in your calendar, archive mail. If it's a task, put it on your task app, archive mail. If it's informational and important, put it in your notes, archive mail. Don't use your inbox as a to-do list. That's what to-do apps are for. Another thing I use extensively are email templates. If it's similar emails that need to be sent more than one time, just create a template. Best example is my sick day email. I'm never actually sick, at least not in the recent times. 
But when I am, I don't want to waste my energy every time to formulate the proper text and send it to the right people. I want to go back to bed, especially when I'm not feeling well. I just use a template, put in the current date and click send. It's super fast and super straightforward. And this goes for any email that you have to send more than one time. Just have a template ready and don't reinvent the wheel every time. And if we are talking email, we can also talk about physical mail. Which brings us to number seven. Automate your physical mail. First of all, a good idea is to switch everything, at least what's possible, uh, from physical mail to email and PDFs. Email is way easier to handle and can be better automated as we talked about uh, just now. But if you still have to deal with mail, I recommend using a scan service for your postal address. It redirects everything to a scan center, they automatically scan it, send it to an inbox via PDF and your phone makes bling when it arrives. This has the benefit that you will attend your mail immediately and can handle it whenever you're out and about or when you are chilling on the sofa. I don't know how other people feel about this, but since I get all my stuff as PDFs, I'm much quicker to deal with whatever it might be. No more envelopes piling up on the kitchen table. I put a link to the German service right there in the video description if you're interested. Since Corona it got a bit expensive, but it's a luxury I'm willing to pay for since it helps me to be more efficient. And talking about pain, let's go to number six. Banking and finances. Automating your finances is another obvious one. Why would you pay bills manually if you can't just do auto pay and schedule transactions? Which doesn't mean set it and forget it. You still can check if everything is in order, but there's a difference between inputting manual transactions every time and just checking up on your account balance to see what's happening. Everything that can be automated should be automated here. Might it be bills, moving money around, saving or investing. Of course, using online banking to manage your finances uh, saves you a lot of time and work, but I just assume that you use online banking here because I believe most people do these days. And if you use online banking, you can create templates. So for these transactions that need to be transferred infrequently with differing amounts, you can just create uh, transaction templates this way you have to do just one or two clicks instead of looking up and typing in the account numbers and receiver every time. So check your online banking. There should be an option to create templates somewhere. Saved me a ton of time in the past. It also prevents typos by the way. So auto pay first and foremost and then templates. And now since I'm also a financial channel, I even have some tricks to automate my budget. I use YNAB and I'm quite happy with it. And in the last couple of years, I used some tricks and hacks to make my budget more straightforward and automated. I spent like two minutes every month budgeting and the rest of the time just looking at my net worth graph, I don't know. I coded a small Python tool which utilizes the API, but that all goes beyond the scope of this video and it's very specific it's a very specific area of automation so i'm not getting into this right now i will do a future video on this so if you're a winabber subscribe for some more winab content in the future and if you're interested in winab uh, use my referral link down in the video description but let's return to the basics automating your savings is a good way to make sure you stay in track with all your financing plans and having a decent amount of savings also reduces stress. The larger the buffer, the more it decreases the pressure for you. It decreases the pressure for you, you feel at your job or in everyday life. Some people call it f*** you money. Uh, I have a finance playlist which covers more of these topics uh, more in depth like <coughs> in the down there part. But that's enough about finances now. Let's stay on topic. We are talking about automation here. And we go to number five. 
repetitive computer tasks and software. Okay, this is a bit of an advanced topic, so I keep it short. If you work on a computer a lot and have some experience with coding, it's always a good idea to write scripts, shortcuts, Excel macros, and tools to automate stuff. I have a rule, if I have to do something more than once, I invest the time and write a script for that. I mainly use Python or shell scripting to accomplish a lot of small tasks. If you are not at that level of tech literacy, you could start with creating custom key bindings and small templates for everyday things. Or you can ask ChatGPT or GitHub Copilot to write code for you. It might be possible for non-technical people to get decent results there if the script is not too complicated. And AI gets better by the day, so there's also great potential to automate things in the future. But let's get to the next item on my list. Coming in at number four, groceries and shopping. Check the supermarket in your area and check if it does delivery. Seriously, I'm saving so much time by just ordering my stuff and get it brought to my doorstep. I even have a pre-configured favorite item list in the online shop. And if I want to order the usual, I just click one button and my grocery shopping is done for the week. I usually click a button on Mondays and schedule the delivery for the end of the week. No more driving around, wasting gas, no more wasting time, no more standing in line, no more searching for stuff in the aisles, no more running around in rush hour traffic because you only have time after work and no more carrying everything up the stairs. So my tip is just use delivery and live life on easy mode, why not? Same goes for ordering anything really. Might it be clothes, electronics, gifts, mats, anything really. Just use online delivery. Most of us do this anyways nowadays. But I'm sure there are some things you still leave the house for and there's always room for improvement and to automate more. Use your time for more productive things or just enjoy more free time. Moving on, number three. Yourself. Okay, this may sound a bit weird, but you can automate yourself. <clears throat> Let me explain what I mean by that. Um, every day you make hundreds of small decisions. Every time you need to think about a task, decide an option or do something that it's not clearly defined, you waste mental energy, which can be used for better or for productive focus work. If you want to take action and you don't know what to take action on, you already lost the game. You need clear defined tasks and schedules. So when you start working on your goals, doing your chores, maintaining your life or really anything in your life, it's best to have a clear plan on how to take action. This is what I mean by automating yourself. It basically means planning your days, your weeks and your months beforehand and then just start doing what's in your to-do list and in your calendar mindlessly, automatic and disciplined following the plan every day. Granted, you can't give 100% every day and do everything you plan, but it's way better than having no plan and doing nothing, that's for sure. Not only to-do lists and calendars are a great help in planning your days. Also checklists are, very, are a very useful tool um, to automate yourself. For stuff you do more than once, just create a checklist. Um, best and most famous example is packing for vacation. But I have more examples in my checklist video. In fact, Many of my videos apply here, so check out my productivity playlists linked in the down there part. <laughs> Next up, we got number two. Okay, this is a weird one too, but I kind of like it. Um, your news and media consumption. Yeah, this is a weird one, but it actually saves you time and it can be broadly seen as automation. Let me explain. Your information, news and media consumption takes up a lot of time, even if it's more a leisure activity and entertainment, but we want to be kept in the loop. 
We want to know the latest rumors, the dankest memes, the new Marvel movie, or just be informed of what's happening in politics. You can automate your devices and online life uh, to not have to search for stuff. Number one, for example, is to configure all your apps and notifications on your phone in such a way that only show you the stuff you want to know and really only the stuff you want to see. Make it non-intrusive like silent without vibration and start adjusting all the apps to your liking with news channels you want to follow, with blogs you want to be updated on, uh, which topics should pop up on your phone so you get the notifications you want. Use the bell icon for awesome YouTube channels you want to follow. <coughs> Click it, damn it, and so on and so on and so on. Pro tip is to use an RSS reader and put all your news feeds into one centralized place. If you configured it right, the notification system on your phone works for you and feeds you the information you want even without actively looking for it. To add to this, you can use push bullet or something similar to sync the notifications to your laptop or desktop. I've been doing this for a while now and I kind of like it. I always get reminded of the things that matter to me the most and I'm not overwhelmed by the notifications either. And if you want to take a pause and focus, shut it off for a while, either don't look at your phone or use focus mode on your phone to shut it off. Now, before we go to number one, a word from our sponsor. Nah, I'm just kidding, I don't have sponsors. I'm lame, but like and subscribe and comment anyways, because I need <coughs> for the algorithm and stuff. And what do we always say? Click the bell icon so you get notified when I post stupid stuff. So now that we got that out of the way, uh, let's go to number one. The number one thing to automate is your digital life different than the last uh, point this is not exactly automation but it saves you so much time and opens the door for more automation so i'm putting this at number one because i think organizing and optimizing my digital life saved me the most amount of time until now you know that situation when you want to write an email to somebody but you need the customer number and the bill you want to reference. Now a lot of people at this point in time start searching for that invoice in a pile of papers or some, some giant folder looking for the info. What I do, I always have a tab open with my notes app. I click on there and I go to my account numbers node and ta-da, two seconds. If I need a bill, I quickly navigate to it in my organized file share and ta-da, I got it. So instead of searching like five minutes for some random info or letter, you just need a couple of seconds and you're way faster at sending the mail or whatever it is you're trying to do. But there's more to it than that. Find stuff in seconds, make sure everything you could possibly need is at your fingertips. If you can't automate, then design everything that you have the least amount of friction. And your digital life can be optimized in a lot of ways. Well, what do I mean by that exactly? Well, I always try to find ways to reduce the friction in everything I do. This goes for everything. Your digital life has great potential to make everything more easy and straightforward. If you need to find a document or if you want to log in to a website or if you want to find a customer identification number or if you want to access an app or service, buy something or even just order food, I always think about what would be the easiest way to get what I need or want and then on the basis of that, I then set up my apps, browser, password manager, devices, document, file storage, bookmarks and everything really so that I have the least amount of steps and most convenient way to get there. It's not exactly automation, but broadly speaking, you automate the need a way to get through hoops to get what you want. Let's take a simple example. 
if I tell you to order something from Amazon, how would that look like? Are you searching for your login info? Are you typing in your password? Do you have to select a payment method and add in your payment information? Or are you just clicking a button and it's done? To elaborate a bit on that, to elaborate a bit on that bit, uh, I see this with friends and family where they complain they don't know their passwords or their login information. My mom even struggles with installing an app because she never remembers her password. Like, look, you only need to remember one password in your life, the one for your password manager. Use a damn password manager and suddenly you can log in everywhere with your fingerprint or with autofill. Ordering food, fingertip. Ordering furniture, fingertip. Installing apps, fingertip. Check your online banking, fingertip. Paying something in the store, fingertip. Logging into Reddit to get the latest cat pictures, fingertip. Use a password manager. And then just use randomized auto-generated passwords for everything. Trust me, it's more secure and more convenient. And this is just one thing that saves you a ton of time in your digital life. There are like 100 more examples. Syncing browser bookmarks between devices, send tabs between devices, send messages between devices, setting up your bookmarks so you always have a quick access, setting up photo sync, using a tab manager, setting up remote access in your home network so you can control your desktop while sitting on the couch. It goes on and on. Point is, always find things to make your life easier and more convenient. If you implement enough of these small little tips, you will notice soon you will accomplish things faster and more effortless. It all adds up. Reduce friction. For most of these tips, especially the last few, you might have to put in a lot of initial work and energy. It's not that easy optimizing your life and it sure doesn't happen overnight. You need to invest some time to get more time. It works like money. If you invest your time and optimize and automate your life, you will get a compound effect of good habits. You won't see benefits for a while, but then once you get results, everything gets easier. The question then remains, if you want to reinvest the time to get even more efficient, or do you stop there and just enjoy whatever it is you like to enjoy? That's all I got. I hope you found some value in this video, and as always, thank you for watching. And see you next time on the Toaster Botnet.